Pro Vice-Chancellor, as public orator, may I present Bridget Toll, a candidate for an honorary degree. When Bridget Toll went to discuss her future with her headmistress towards the end of her time at school, she was told, not degree caliber, I'm afraid, Bridget. Bridget hadn't previously considered university, but she did then. She encountered similar resistance from her father, who saw it as her priority to go into the family business. And what could possibly be the use of a degree in politics, law and economics to someone managing a hosiery and knitwear business? Fortunately, Bridget was and is not the sort of person to be easily deterred. She got a place at Exeter University and having completed her first degree, managed to stay on for a further year despite being cut off from family financial support. She then spent a year teaching in Uganda with voluntary service overseas. The country made a great impression on her and she has supported a school there ever since. Eventually, Bridget's escape from the family business had to end. For much of the last four centuries, Leicestershire has been famous for its hosiery industry. Tolls of Loughborough was founded in the late 19th century by Bridget's grandfather, a self-made man who started life as an apprentice in one of the many local factories. There was no boss's daughter favoritism for Bridget. She was expected to study textiles at Leicester Polytechnic, now De Montfort University, to take a course in management, to learn the ropes and gain experience in all aspects of the business. A little to her surprise, she found this rewarding, and her experience of working with the women and men employed by Tolls was reflected in a lasting commitment to the welfare of the workforce. She eventually became Joint Managing Director alongside her cousin. While he ran the production side, she focused on marketing and sales, negotiating with major retailers like Marks and Spencer, at the time a dominant force in the industry whose contracts could make or break a company. Bridget was then one of only three women managing directors of public limited companies in the UK. But the industry was changing fast, undermined by cheap imports from the Far East. Hosiery firms all over the East Midlands were closing, and the painful decision was made to accept a bid for the company as a going concern in the hope of protecting a thousand jobs at least for a time. Meanwhile, Bridget had been making an increasingly important contribution to girl guiding. She enjoyed being a guide herself and had gone on to play a leading role, first locally and then nationally. And when there was a crisis at the top, Bridget was the obvious candidate to lead the movement as chief guide and chair of the country's largest voluntary youth organization. This was a position of international importance, taking Bridget all over the world and bringing her into contact with members of the royal family and international dignitaries. Her success in steering the organization through a period of change was reflected in the award of Charity Trustee of the Year in 2000 and her appointment as CBE in 2001. Lesser women might have rested on their laurels at this point, but that is not Bridget's way, fortunately for us. As she retired as chief guide, she joined the university as a lay member of our governing body, the council. These lay members are a vital component of the university's governance. They give their time and expertise voluntarily, and few, if any, over the last 100 years have contributed more than Bridget told. In 2009, she undertook the demanding additional role of treasurer of the university. And then in 2013, she was appointed pro-chancellor and chair of council, a job which might loosely be described as the vice-chancellor's boss, not running the university, but making sure it is being well run, acting as guardian of its financial security and institutional reputation. As treasurer, Bridget made full use of her business expertise. 
She was convinced that universities should be judged by their educational and research achievements, but knew that they had to be businesslike in their processes and management. She carried the same convictions to her role as chair of council. She understood the university as a community and appreciated the importance of reasoned argument and persuasion rather than diktat in bringing people on side. One mechanism for achieving this was meetings in the coffee shop with individual academics. This was also important because she never really had an office at the university, lest she be thought to be crossing the line from governance. As one of our colleagues has said, she must have been the only person who worked at the university three or four days a week and never had a place to hang her coat. She served with two vice-chancellors during periods when the university was under severe financial strain and quietly guided them towards sensible decisions. On the most serious issues, when it became apparent that persuasion alone was not sufficient, she had the courage to make hard decisions. It is no exaggeration to say that the university owes much of its current good health to the contribution of Bridget Toll over the past 20 years. This does not complete the list of Bridget's contributions to public life. To name only two, she is a Deputy Lieutenant of Leicestershire and has just completed a year as President of the Leicester Literary and Philosophical Society, the learned body whose advocacy led to the foundation of our university. Bridget's natural modesty makes her uncomfortable with praise, so listening to this speech may have been agonizing for her. She has been a model of leadership for women, and indeed for both sexes, in industry, the voluntary sector, and higher education. As a nation, the importance of integrity and selfless public service has been much on our minds of late. Bridget has exemplified those virtues in this university and in every other aspect of her career. So it is unquestionably right to acknowledge her many achievements and to do that publicly, as we do today. Pro Vice-Chancellor, on the recommendation of the Senate and the Council, I present Bridget Ellen Toll that you may confer on her the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws. Lord Mayor, honoured guests, graduates and members of the university. Firstly, I'd like to thank the university and especially the public orator. I'm not worthy of such flattery, but thank you. I'm honoured now to be a graduate of the University of Leicester to join all those celebrating their graduations who have worked hard for their degrees, which of course I have not. Today is your day, from edge to edge, and I want to congratulate all of you. This is a day to celebrate your achievements and enjoy the celebrations. It's been a long time coming for you. You have earned your degrees in the most difficult times. You've gained a special quality, resilience. You have kept going through COVID, through financial challenges, and passed a few exams too. You all have my admiration. You are capable and determined individuals. Individuals do make a difference. Look at the history of this university. 
Would there have been a University of Leicester if Dr. Astley Clark had not spent years advocating the idea amongst the decision makers of Leicester? If he had not given the first significant financial donation and encouraged others? What if Thomas Fielding Johnson, a textile manufacturer, had not decided to buy and donate the land and hospital buildings as the home of the new university college? Those individual actions 100 years ago made a difference. Not every Midland city and town gained a university college at that time. Today, I'm sure there are many graduates here who want change in society, in communities, in their countries, and in the world. My generation has left plenty for you to do. Those individuals who have the vision, the energy, and the education will make change happen. You can be true citizens of change. I wish you every success. <laughs>